The Bible says, teach us to number our days that we might apply our heart to wisdom. The greatest mistake anybody can make is not to understand time and season. The Bible says concerning the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times and seasons and they knew what Israel ought to do. The lack of understanding of times is what has kept people that are 50 years old to have no value for themselves. Because many people have ended up saying that look, God's time is the best or, or, or that when they, when they don't have what they have, they will say that it is not their turn. It is when God wants to bless them. No, 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 no. Everything has been done before the foundation of the world. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2. The Bible says, and God rested after he had finished his work. God is not coming to do your own case differently. So today I want to demystify that time teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart to the wisdom whenever you hear the word teach it speaks of a teacher and a student relationship which means there is an instruction of knowledge the teacher has to communicate what that student should know so there is an instruction part of it Whenever you hear our days, it speaks of age, age. Whenever you hear apply, apply means to relate to something. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. So if you put these words back in this same text and plug it again, it will tell you, instruct us according to our age so that we can relate the application of knowledge to its responsibilities. That means at a particular age, what are you supposed to know and to do? Because if a 50-year-old man were to come and wear school uniform of, of JSS1, you would know there is a problem with that man, true or false. If you see a lady that is 30 years old, just learning to take baby milk, you will know there is a problem. Because it is expected that when a child is one year old, that child should be able to walk or to stand. If that child doesn't stand, people will start praying and fasting because something is wrong with that child. Your age has significant responsibilities. When you understand your age and what you should do at that particular time, then it will help you to know what you should be doing and how to get there. Now, let me start by demystifying it. Between the ages of zero to five, it is called the year of of innocence. At this time, a child doesn't know anything where is the innocence level is too much. The Bible says that unto us a child is born. So at this same level, you are called a child. Now, it stretches up to when you are 6 to 12. Between the ages of 6 to 12, they are known as foundation years. This is when you begin to learn to speak your language, learn to communicate in English, learn to go to school, learn to speak a lot of things. And most importantly, this is when the foundation of the scripture is meant to be given to every child. Who taught you to speak your language? Did you go to any school to learn to speak? You, you, you got it by the age of six, seven, and eight. Even your juniors, your babies all understand it. In the Bible, in Luke chapter 2, from verse 41 to 52, speaks about Jesus. As the custom was, they would take Jesus up the way to Jerusalem during the time of the festival, and there he will be there listening and reading. It is imperative from the age of six that children are taught the word of God. Eh? Children are, are bestowed with those kind of knowledge about Jesus Christ, about values, because if a child does not learn values on time, if a child does not learn things that will improve his value, his life will become destructive. And if your life, if, if the values you learn are destructive, you will end up becoming a thief. But if if your values are right, you will end up being productive and then you will end up in life. But if your values are wrong, then there is a challenge for you. At the age of 12, Jesus was in the synagogue. They even forgot Jesus for three days. When they came back, they saw him speaking with lecturers, asking questions. What questions do our children ask us today? What questions? 
I was watching a video yesterday on Instagram and a boy of like seven years old was telling his father and his mother the sound he was hearing from their bedroom. He was making an echo because that thing that they were doing was echoing in his head. What things are our children listening to? What things are our brother, our babies listening to that they can demystify? My daughter is eight years old. That girl watches me every single day. She woke me up one day on Thursday evening around eight and told me she wants to buy a plot of land. I thought there was something wrong with her medulla oblongata, but I didn't want to disturb it because at seven years old, why would it why would it disturb me this was Thursday Friday morning she came to my room and said daddy I am dressed up I am going to inspect land at the age of seven but I didn't want to boss her but I said okay go Sarah had dressed up and then they came to the house to pick Sarah up I stood out and I said who are these people they said they are taking her to go and inspect land a seven year old girl I was afraid. But I told security to escort her and everything. I didn't want to bust her bubble. Any imagination she wanted, let her imagination fly. Her, her senior sister, who is 16, followed her. Then the senior sister reported that she told Sarah, who is seven, that this place is far. Sarah told them that it is because it is her first time. Meanwhile, the distance of that place it's like going to you one hour away. Stay with me. When they got to the land, she came out of the car and looked at it. Stood there. She said, this is the one she wants. Everybody laughed. They said she has to fill a form because they didn't want to disappoint Sarah. Sarah filled the form herself and they told her who will sign. She said she can sign for herself. She doesn't need her father to sign. So they signed. After signing, they told that the land will cost 540000 Do you have money? She said she came with her own money. She brought her piggy bank. Her piggy bank opened the 27,000 naira with a promissory note from her father, 100000 So she had 127000 Stay with me. They told her that she needs another 300 and something thousand. She told them that she would get the money. She came to me <laughs> when I was sleeping again. At home, I call Sarah the manipulator because she has tied me in her baby finger. So Sarah came to me. When Sarah came to me, she said, Daddy, the land I saw is 500 and something thousand. I have only 127. Please, how do I get this land? Hmm. I wanted to tamper with her destiny. Are you hearing me? I wanted to leave history for her not to forget. That if she says she wants to buy land at the age of seven, I will make her buy that land. So on her platform in life, she will tell that she bought her first land at the age of seven. So I collected her 27,000 naira. I collected the promissory note. I gave her more than the 27,000. I told the 100. And I gave her a card, go and swipe it. She knows all my PIN numbers. She removed 500 and something thousand and paid. And they gave her a receipt and offered her that she can get five and five plots of land, one extra for free. She signed the contract again. <laughs> Question one At the age of seven, what were you thinking about? <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> um, we need to be careful what our children learn. Today on Instagram, we see different things. Our young children are looking at, now it is not new thing. Pornography has taken over the whole place. Not the word of God. We need to feed our children aright. Today, Sarah, has six plots of land. My brother, I have negotiated that I will ensure that I buy that plot from her because the plot are already moving. Sarah is eight years old. 
At the age of 12, Jesus was in the synagogue. Because by the age 13, there is what they call the rite of passage for every man in Israel, called the celebration of bar mitzvah, as a man. That means welcome to manhood, as a man. At the age of 13, you have that right, and when they, when, when, when they do that initiation for you, that means you're a man. That means you're a man. Biologically, if you're a man, your voice begins to crack because puberty has set in. And when puberty has set in, now you now start having air in your armpit, pimples all over your face, you start feeling that something's happening. And if care is not taken, wet dreams begin to start at that period. As a woman, your body morphology begins to change. Your, your, your cells begin to change. And at that point in time, puberty says you now have your monthly visitation that starts at that point in time. If biologically, something changes in your body, how come you don't understand something should have changed in your mind? Stay there with me. Because at the age of 14 to 19, that period is called the period of vision definition. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. This is when your aspirations are at high. I want to be a medical doctor. I want to be a pastor. I want to be a singer. You want to do something. This is where your imagination flies. In the Bible, this is when you are called a youth. When David went to fight Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verse number 33. Now Saul looked at Samson, looked at them, David, and said, you are but a youth. You are not a man of war. You are coming to fight Goliath. Goliath is a seasoned man of war, but you are a youth. So the real definition, according to scripture, on who a youth is, is from the ages of 14 to 19. Every other thing is a man. How do we have youth leaders at the age of 55 years old? Stay with me. You are a youth at the age of 14 to 19. This is when your aspiration goes. But when a young man who is aspiring, I want to be a, 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 I want to be an engineer, or I want to be a, a, a singer, I want to be a musician, the father will stop him from thinking, from talking that way. I want you to become a, 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 an accountant. When he says, I want to become a lawyer, the father will stop him, says, I want you to become an engineer. So because of that, the boy goes to engineering school, becomes an engineer. At the end of it, when he has finished getting the degree, he gives the degree to his father and carries his microphone says I'm, I'm beginning to sing I'm beginning to preach because there was something that he was called for before you were formed in the belly God knew you before your flesh came upon he had ordained you there was a purpose for you to come and fulfill it and it is not your father's purpose it is the purpose God has put inside you when we begin to tell our children this is what you must do you kill their future you kill it Many people's futures have been killed because of tradition. Because you want lawyer. You know, I know some ladies who have become lawyers, but all they want to do is fashion designers. Allow them to become what they want to do. They told David, you are but a use. And he still killed Goliath. So between the ages of 14 to 19, that's when you are called a youth. That's when your imagination flies. Please stay with me. Let it fly. But when you get to 20, everything changes. I am an advocate for a lot of things. When I saw this scripture, God woke me up. I could not rest. In the book of Numbers chapter 1, verse number 2 and number 3, the Bible says, Take ye the son of all the congregation of the children after their families by the house of their fathers with the numbers, their names by every male according to their poll. Next verse. From 20 years old and above, able to go to war. Hey! So for you to go to war in Israel first, you must be 20 years old. When you are 20 years old, the ability and the skill is taught to you and they give you a shield and a sword. You go to battle. When you get to battle, 
It is not your father you will ask, can I beat this man? Or your mother that you say, should I defend? No, 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 no. That decision is yours because if you don't take that decision, you are going to die. Now, so at the age of 20, it speaks of decision here. If you are 20 years old and you are still in your father's house, it's a shame. Stay with me. I came here for trouble. I came here for trouble. Now here we do. We die here today. If you want to join the Nigerian army, I read the new recruitment policy. It's not new, it has been on. For Nigerian Air Force, Nigerian Army, immigration, it states there that if you want to be recruited, you need to be 18 to 26 years old. If you are 18 years old, you don't need a letter from your mother or from your father. You go and apply to Nigerian Army. They will receive you, take you to Kaduna, flog the nonsense out of you. When they flog the nonsense, they take you to Sambisa, give you a gun, and tell you that anything that will stop you against defending this country, you are authorized to kill it. Anything that comes against you, you are authorized to kill it. Anything that will withhold from you, you are authorized to kill it. Can you imagine Nigerian government will trust a boy of 18 years old with a gun and life ammunition and say defend Nigeria? If Nigerian government can trust you with a gun, how much more can you not trust yourself to succeed at 18? They will train you to be a soldier. Train yourself to succeed. I beg you. I'm not sure he higher. We have pampered our children for too long. We have overfed them with food. We have overfed them that our children have eaten manners like the children of Israel. They ate manners too much that they forgot their manners. Stay with me. Yes. In the book of that first number, chapter, chapter 1, verse 18, show me. It says that, look for the second letter, and everyone, they congregate together, and everyone according to the pool, and, and the assembly of the congregation together, and their second one declared, okay, it says, according to their name, from 20 years old and above. This is verse 18. Give me verse 20. Verse 20. Look at the third line. It says, from our old. From how old? This is verse 20. Give me verse 22. Verse 22, verse 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 45. Says if you are 20 years old, you are able to go to war. You are able. In the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 14, the children of Israel stood with God. And they were murmuring against God. They said they are not going to that land. That the land which God wants to give them, which was Canaan. Said, go and spy the land. Said, we are grasshoppers. God was angry. They were murmuring. He says in verse, Numbers chapter 14, verse 22, verse 29, give it to me. He says, because all those men, I've seen the good, Numbers chapter, I mean, Numbers 14, 29. Numbers 14, 29. Is that it? He says, and your carcasses shall fall. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness. All of you that are numbered, according to your whole number, 20 years old and above, who have murmured against me. Your decision here is 20. Anybody that stops you from designing or from taking a decision as 20 is killing your future. It's scripture. I'm not the one that wrote it. Now, between the ages of 20 to 30, is your year to make mistakes. You are authorized to fail. You are permitted to fail. Failure is the pathway to success. Jesus tried because there was a marriage of Cana at Cana of Galilee. They told Jesus, convert water to wine. And Jesus looked at them. He said, my time had not yet come because he had been practicing at home. The mother had been seeing him practicing. What are you practicing now? What are you practicing now? What are you practicing now? Jesus followed his father to the farm. Jesus followed his father to go and cut wood. His father was a carpenter. Jesus, every time you read about Jesus, he was using agricultural products. He knew how to sow. 
He knew how to read. He knew how to cut wood. He knew how to do. He was practicing. What are you practicing now? If you are not practicing anything now, learning to fail, learning to make mistakes, you'll be discussing APC and PDP politics. In John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11, Jesus looked at them and he said something. And he said, my time has not yet come because he had been practicing. His mother told them, anything he tells you to do, do it. At the age of 30 is the age of grace. When you get to 30 years old, your juniors call you uncle and auntie. Once they call you uncle or auntie, know that you have entered into grace. If you used to sleep in the house, and then you send your junior one, go and buy me bread, and they say, yes, uncle, know that the grace of sleeping is upon you. <laughs> if you're a hard worker at 30, you have entered into grace. So between 20 to 30, Make the mistake so that by 30, the grace of that job or that state comes upon you. At the age of 30, Jesus started ministry. At the age of 30, Joseph became prime minister in Egypt. At the age of 30, um, Jesus, David became king over Israel. How old are you? At 30 years old, grace comes upon you. Grace in that industry. I don't care if you're a shoe shiner, be the best shoe shiner in the world. I don't care if you are just an obioma, be the best obioma in the world. I don't care if you are just a sweeper, be the best. If you are doing that, when grace comes upon you, your shoe shining will become an industry. Your selling oil will become an industry. There are many young boys in Igbo here, in this Abba Abba here, that are making money from selling fuel, from selling tissue, from selling cattle. Whatever you do, you get it. It's your market. Stop it. Just stay with me. Learn to be, make the mistake. Anybody that tells you that you are not authorized to make mistakes, tell him I said, mistakes are the pathway to success. The house where Mr. Success lives is on failure avenue. You are authorized to fail. Fail, try, fail, try, fail, try. There is nobody that has succeeded that has never failed. For everybody that, you have su that has succeeded, at least 10 failures. For one, for one success, 10 failures. So if you want 20 success, get ready for 180 failures. Failure knows my address. But it knows that when he opens the door, I will turn it into something good. I fail every day, but I can't keep myself. I come and die by myself. What are you talking about? Stay with me. When you find your space, whether you're a man or a woman at the age of 30, between 30 to 39, you crisscross on that matter. You become, you learn the techniques, the strategy on how to go through it. Because by 40, you become a master in it. You gain mastery at 40. When you ever you write 40, 40 biblically means the end of probation. If you work in a company, they will give you a probational offer. That means they are going to check your background, see whether you're doing. Then they will do an assessment of you. When they finish that assessment, they will give you a confirmation of the appointment. When they confirm your appointment, that means every breakthrough, every opportunity, every allowance that is due to the managing director, you are also due. Now, if you are a fool at 40, between 40 to 50 is when you exercise mastery. You exercise your mastery in that field. You are not a JJC. You know your onions. You are the best in that field. So anybody can talk to you. You can market it. Now by 50, 50 is the peak of your own excellence. Because by 50 years old, you have reached your peak. Numbers chapter 4, verse 2 and verse 3. You will read something interesting there. It says that everyone from 30 to 50, able to serve in the house of the Lord, said, give me the song of children. According to the first, verse 3. Give me verse 3. 
And verse 3 says that from 30 years old, even upwards to 50 years, all that can enter into the host to do the work of the tabernacle. That means by 30, you must be an expert at your word. And by 50, it is your peak. You cannot be starting business at the age of 40. If you start business at the age of 40, you have lost 28 years of your life. Because the first step of starting a business is visionary. Visionary is at 12 years old. Teach our children the way they should go so that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Stay with me. When you get to 50, you are at the peak of your career. You're able to walk. Between 50 to 60, and when you are a mentor, mentorship stage, you begin to teach the young ones under you how to become what they should become. Because by 60, 60 is retirement age. You don't come and say you want to start business at 60. If you are to cook food for 30 minutes and you cook it for one hour, it will lose all the nutrients. Any food that is cooked for too long, it loses value. How do you buy a G-Wagon at 70 and enjoy it? It's not sweet. So you need to study to show yourself approved. A workman rightly dividing the truth. Don't live before your time. Study well. In the book of Leviticus, chapter number 27 from verse 1 to 7. Leviticus 27. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 2, says, Speak unto the children of Israel, and unto them, when a man shall make a singular vow, that person shall be of an estimation of verse 3. If it is a male, a man, from the age of 20 up to 60, your value as a man is 50 shekel. Let me help you understand it. It means that if... Um, gentlemen, please come, sir. Yes, come. Come to the pulpit here. Let's imagine that this man is, how old are you, sir? 22. Very good. This man is 22 years old. Me, I am 47. Now, if you look at this scripture, it says that if a man should make a vow by estimation from the ages of 20 to 60, his value shall be 50 shekel. In the eyes of God, when they call us to stand for the Lord, God will not look at him that is a young man. His value is the same as my own. If me, I'm dropping 300,000, God expects him to drop 300,000. So it is not your age that matters. For as a man thinketh, so, so you need to catch up with time. You need to walk up with time. You need to wake up with time and stop giving excuses that you are too young to succeed. You are too young to be rich. Wrong, 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 wrong. You are old enough to be rich. Once you are 20 years old and I'm 47, you are my mate in the presence of God. You are my mate. But if it's a female, the Bible says 30 shekel. It will be 92,800 naira. So if you're a woman, stop waiting for somebody to give you hand me down. You are to generate opportunity. Please go and sit down. This is 20 to 60. So it says that the most productive age of a man is 20 to 60 years old. That's the most productive age. Next verse. It says that, that if the person is from five years old, five years, even up to 20, so you can't give me an excuse that you're a young man, you're still a teenager. The Bible says that, that if you're 15, five, up to, um, five years up to 15, if you're a male child, you are expected 20 shekel. As a female, 10 shekel. As a male child, that's 51,840 naira. It's expected of you. That's what the Bible says. I'm not the one that wrote it all. It's the Bible. It says, and if it is one month old, up to five years, 
Estimation, male child, five shekel. Female child, three shekel. Give me by seven. If you are 60 years old and above, you cannot tell me you are not productive. As a man, 15 shekel, 38,800. As a female, 10 shekel, 25,900. Understanding your age and the value you bring is important. I came to tell you that stop allowing tradition to hold you down. Everybody here, there is value you bring to the kingdom. You are here to add value. God created you to become somebody of repute. Our children are young. Our children are small. If we don't show them the way, they will not become anything. Somebody asked me a question. He said, Sarah is seven years old. How did she do it? How did Sarah decide that she will buy six plots of land? I did not have an excuse until one day when I came back and I looked at Sarah. Sarah knows I have a board on my wall, two inside my bedroom, that I write my vision, I design where I want to be. So Sarah sits there and she watches me. At the age of seven, six, seven, she watches what her father does. She writes down, she does this, she sees it. So when I left, Sarah carries my marker and begins to draw. I wish I could show you those pictures. She draws a whole estate that she's going to build an estate. She will build one house for her father, build one for her sister, build one for herself. She will put a school there, a gate, a swimming pool, and then there will be courtyard to play, that the governor will live in the estate, and then there's an airport. At the age of seven, she's already thinking like that. Teach our young ones in the way to grow, so that when they go, they will not depart from it. But let us protect our children. The Bible was written for our instruction. Teach us to number our days. Rise up.